Hi, I'm Tim from LaunchPress at Digital Marketing. And in today's video, we're going to be looking a little closer at product availability within the Google Merchant Center and also in Shopify stores. Recently, I just onboarded a new Shopify client and they had a great question for me. They said, Tim, how can we continue to advertise our products when we run out of stock? Initially, I said, that's easy. Just increase your inventory levels in the back of Shopify to the highest number that you possibly can. Their response was, great idea, but it will mess up their infantry system that they use in the back end of Shopify. So I was like, hmm, okay, let me go investigate that for you and circle back to you with an answer. And the short answer is that yes, you can do it. Just requires a few setting adjustments in the back of your Shopify store, as well as the Google Merchant Center in setting up attributes within your data feed. And before I take you over to my screen and show you how to do that, just wanna quickly let you know that we do provide Google Ads management as a service for Shopify store owners. And if you're having trouble with your Google Merchant Center or your Google Ads account, or if you're looking to partner with someone who can help your store scale and get more profitability, check out the link just below and reach out to us through the contact form on the website and I'll get in touch with it as soon as possible. Okay, and here we are in the back of my test Shopify store, cheapcampinggear.net. In order to overcome the infantry issues that you will face when you run out of stock, is to get the settings correct in order to keep your ads running. If you're in the overview screen like I am now, come across where it says products and click products. You may only have one or two products that you want to set up for continue selling when out of stock. You can easily come into that product that you're choosing and scroll down and then under here where it says inventory, you can check the box for continue selling when out of stock and then click save. Now to do this at bulk, come back to products, then check the box where we can select all products, then click bulk edits. And you'll be brought across to the bulk edit screen, select columns, scroll down to you find the continue selling when out of stock and check the box. And then just click outside that so we can see the products we want to check off and then proceed to go through and check whatever boxes and products associated for where you want to continue selling when it's out of stock. Once you're happy, select save. Okay, so that's part one. Now for part two is coming to the Google Merchant Center and setting up the feed rules. So the products do not become disapproved when they become out of stock. So it's important that we take a quick look over at the documentation in Google about availability. And we can see here when, when to use it, we have four different values to pick from when it comes to availability, in stock, out of stock, pre-order and back order. Now the value that we need to pick in our circumstance is the back order availability. However, there's an important note to make here. As much as you would like to state any product that is out of stock, just to change that value to being in stock. This can go against Google's terms of service and actually have the product disapproved within the Merchant Center or in Google Ads itself. Reason being is because shoppers have an expectation when they buy the product that it's gonna be shipped within a certain time period, which you have stated within the Google Merchant Center when you first set up your account. If you have any delay from what you have stated within your shipping settings within the Google Merchant Center, you're gonna get some disgruntled purchases and it doesn't reflect good on the user experience included to Google because they bought your product through one of your shopping ads, for example. So the option that we do need to pick is this back order value. And in saying that, if the product isn't available at the time, but you're still happy to accept orders, and you're gonna be shipping again sometime in the future, you are required to provide an availability date. So you have to set this availability date attribute to indicate when it's gonna be shipped again. And since we have to change this availability date attribute, let's come to the documentation for the availability date we actually have to format it in such a way to include year, month, day, and a particular time. But also important to note, under the minimum requirements, we can see that the availability date should be added to the product landing page and be clear to customers. For example, could say May 6, 2023. However, if you don't have an exact date, you can estimate a date and say May 2023. But with that said, we can't just say May 2023 in Google Merchant Center. We have to use this format in terms of this example value in the Google Merchant Center. And now that I've been rambling a bit, let's go over to the Google Merchant Center now and see how it's done. So firstly, we have to go to our data sources. So there's two ways to go to your data sources. One is actually coming into the settings area and clicking data sources, or you could be under products on the left-hand side and you have the view data sources link here, which I will click. Then under the product sources, in data sources, you'll find where your primary data sources live. I haven't tested this yet, but it could be done under supplemental data sources as well. But for today, we're just gonna stick with our primary data source and our content API, which has been set up through an app in the back of our Shopify store previously. So let's click inside the content API. And then under the tab here, it says your attribute rules. We'll click that and then we'll add a new rule. Now you can click the drop down here to find the, the attribute that you're looking for, or we can just 
simply just start typing availability. So we'll click availability. Now we're under the attribute rules for the availability. So first thing is that we need to edit the source and we need to select where we're gonna replace that attribute data. So click the edit conditions icon on the right. And as we can see here, we have no conditions at the moment. So we'll click the type or select drop down, select availability, or start typing in availability again, or choose it from the drop down. When availability contains, you got more options here in terms of all the different variables you would like to be able to find the value that you're looking for. We're gonna stick with contains and we can add our primary value. We'll just start typing and that'll be out of stock. And inside the Google Merchant Center within these feed rules, there's no need to add in the underscore in between each word. And we just go ahead and click that value once we've written it out. And you can have more conditions should you need to. In our case, it's not necessary to do so. You can either click or or an and condition. For us today, it's not necessary. So we can just cross all those out. Then come down to select how you want to replace that attribute data. You have three options, set to, extract, or take the latest. Here you can do an absolute change depending on what the conditions are to what you want to set to. Extract, you might be looking for certain words, like certain variables, or it might be capitalizations or whatnot that you're wanting to make changes with. Or you can take the most recent data value according to this attribute. But for us, we just need to set it to. And again, we would write back order. So we'll click that value. So we can see it's set to, and then we click OK. And now we can see that if the API availability contains out of stock, then set it to back order. And before we save it as a draft, we can show a preview. But in my case, as we don't have any products out of stock, if we hover over like this, we can see that it shows in stock still and availability still in stock. Doesn't matter if it's active or in draft. To show you for an exercise, if it is, how the data will change once this attribute rule has been deployed, we'll select or put availability again, contains say in stock, and then we'll come back and we'll just click show another product. So updates. And now that's updated, we can hover over it and we can see that if it was available with the rule set in place, it would change the attribute to back order. So now that you can see how the attribute will change in real time, we will remove that unwanted condition, click OK. Next, we just save it as draft. Okay, so now let's add the availability date before we test these rules and apply changes. So again, add an attribute rule, availability, click availability date. Again, we'll click the edit conditions icon. We type in availability. So when availability contains back order, click that value. We'll replace the attribute data and we'll come back to the documentation here again real quick so we can get that formatting. We'll copy that example value, come back to the Google Merchant Center, paste that in, and we'll just make some slight changes to this. So the time is as of this video, which is 2024. We'll make that September. And then it's important to click the add value here so we can see that exactly what it looks like. Click OK. Let's show a preview again. Now it's showing that the value is empty because no products are in back order on the site. So let's save this as a draft. And so we can just check if that's really working properly. Let's come back in quickly to the availability attribute and we'll edit that and we'll, and we'll add back in very quickly the in stock value that we removed before. OK, that show preview. Just double check it's working show another product and it's in back order. We can save that as draft. Okay, so then you can go ahead and test these rules like so, but it takes about 10 to 20 minutes for this test to run, depending on how many products you got in your store. So we'll click the test rules just to see what results come up from our rules that we've got set in draft at the moment. And as it says here, we could take up to 10 to 20 minutes to run that test. Okay, and now our test is complete. That did take about 10 minutes, even for only 111 products. So let's see what results came back. So we'll click the show test. Okay, and under the test here, we can see here the attribute change summary. We can click the drop down here and we can see that there's only 12 items changed, but I believe that once that rule starts running fully, that every single product would go into back order that is currently in stock. So we know that's working. However, we don't 100% know if the availability date is working. And that's purely because we haven't applied the changes yet for all those products to be in the status of back order. But I believe once we do, as we set the, the rule, we wanted to set exactly to the formatting of how Google describes it with that date. It will display on ads when the products are going to become available again. And before I apply the changes, come back into the availability and we'll quickly edit and remove that in stock example that I had placed. Click OK, save as draft, and then click apply changes once you're happy with all the rules. Okay, once that's done, we'll exit out of here and come to where the products are. And depending on when your feed is updating, 
where it shows availability here, it should say back order here on those products according to your rules. So that's how essentially you set up rules in the back end of the Google Merchant Center under the data sources and the attribute rules. So you can continue to run ads on products that are out of stock, but you still want to take orders for. And with that said, if you found value in this video, please click like and subscribe just down below. And thanks for watching today's video. I'll see you in the next. Bye for now.